Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is S and I make red pie mini game tutorials. So recently I created a poll on my Patreon page for those in the voting tier Ohio where they could vote on which tutorial they would like to see next on the channel. And I gave them three options where one of them was a character customization script which also happens to be the one that got the most votes. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a customizable character for your visual novel games. Now let's have a look at the tutorial outline. So we want to be able to create a customizable character where we can switch between the different hairs and eyes, for example. And this character should then be able to be used in different parts of the game, such as together with a piece of dialogue. And we also want to make sure that this customizable character is going to save its looks after the player has finished customizing it. So when the user is saving and then loading a game, the character that they have created earlier on should be able to be loaded back up. The player should also be able to pick a name for the character by using an input field on the screen and then that name is going to be used together with the character throughout the game. The player can only start the game if a name has been entered into the field and if they haven't entered a name then an error message is going to be shown instead. In order to follow along with this tutorial, you're going to need to prepare a few things first. So first of all, you're going to need a new Brempy project in the size 1280 times 720 pixels using the latest version of the Brempy engine. You are also going to need the image assets that we are using in this tutorial, which you can download from the description box below. It is also good if you have at least some basic Python programming knowledge, which is going to make it easier for you to follow along with the coding in the tutorial. However, you may still find this tutorial to be interesting, useful and educational to follow along with either way. The finished script will be available for download for my patrons in the tier Supporter Ohio when the tutorial series has finished. With that said, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you want to do is to clean up your script file a bit so that you're only left with the start label like this. And then you want to make sure that you have added all of the images from this tutorial into the images folder right here. And as you can see, I have separated all of the images into three different subfolders called backgrounds, character, and UI. So in the UI folder, I've added the arrow buttons as well as the start button. And in the character folder, I've added all of the character related images. And then in the backgrounds folder, I have the background image. So once you've done that, we can go ahead and start coding. So to make it easy for us to be able to switch between different images for the customizable character, we're going to create a few lists that is going to contain strings that corresponds to all the different versions of images that we can choose for the character. So let's go ahead and start creating one of them. So we're going to add a dollar sign inside of the start label like this to create a Python variable. And this variable we're going to call skin colors and we're going to set this to a list so we're going to add two square brackets like so and now we're going to fill this with all the skin colors that we have available in the images folder so if we have a look at the images folder in the character subfolder we can see that we have three different skin colors with the file names body skin dark body skin light and body skin medium so in this skin colors list, we are only going to add the name of the skin color, which is going to be light, medium, and dark. So let's go ahead and add those into this list. So we're going to say light, and then medium, and dark. Now these are of course only the ones that I've chosen to add for this tutorial, but you can of course add more or less if you want, and name them whatever you want. And then we can go ahead and add the different hair colors that we have available. So we're going to create a new variable and we're going to call this hair colors. And if we have a look inside of the characters folder again, we can see that we have a few different hair images available. And these are both back and front versions of the hair that goes behind the body sprite and in front of it. And the colors that we have available are blonde, brown and pink. So we're going to enter those colors into this list. So we're going to say 
brown, blonde, and pink, like so. And now let's do the same thing with the eye color. So we're going to create a new variable, and we're going to call this eye colors. And then we're going to create a new list as usual. And the eye colors that we have available are blue, dark pink, and green. So let's go ahead and add those. So we're going to say blue, dark pink, and green. And then let's do the last one, which is going to be for the different shirts. So we're going to call this one shirt colors. And the colors that we have available are blue, green, and pink. So we're going to say blue, green, and pink, like so. And now we're going to create four more variables that are going to contain one of the values from each of these categories. And the values for these variables are going to be changed whenever the user is switching between the different images. So let's go ahead and create a few of the lines underneath here, like so. And then we're going to create these new variables. So the first one we're going to call skin color instead of skin colors. And this one is going to be equal to the first item instead of the skin colors list as a default value when the game first starts. And to do that, we're going to say skin colors and then two square brackets. And then we're going to add a zero instead of that, like so. So now we're picking the first item from the skin colors list and putting that inside of the skin color variable. And then we'll do the same thing for the other variables. So I'm just going to duplicate this line like so. And then I'm going to rename this to say hair color instead, like so. And then the same here, hair colors, like so. So now we're picking the first item from the hair colors list and putting that inside of the hair color variable. And then let's do the eye color variable as well. So I'm going to duplicate this line and rename this to eye color and then change this to say eye colors, like so. And let's do the last one, which is going to be the shirt color. So we're going to name this to shirt and this shirts. Like so. The next thing we're going to do is to create the actual customizable character displayable object. And to do that, we're going to create a composite that contains all of the character's different parts. And if you never used a composite before in your games, it's simply a displayable object that can take many other displayable objects inside of it. But I will also leave a link into the description box below where you can read more about composites. So to create one, we're going to create a few of the lines above the start label. And then we're going to define a new image. So we're going to say image and we can call this character. And this is going to be equal to a composite. So we're going to say composite like so. And the content we're going to put inside of this composite, we're going to split into several lines to make it more easy to read. So to do that, I'm going to press enter inside of these two brackets, like so, and then go inwards once in the indentations, like so. So the first piece of content that this composite requires is a tuple containing two values, which represents the height and the width of this composite. So for that, we're going to add two from brackets again, like so, and then we're going to add the width and the height. So the width is going to be 846, and the height is going to be 1028. And then we're going to add a comma after that, like so, and then press enter again. Now the rest of the content that goes inside of this composite is going to be the actual images that we want to display together with the locations inside of this composite. Now a cool thing about a composite is that we can define the images as dynamic images, which means that we can pick an image according to the contents of a variable. So let's go ahead and do that now so I can show you what I mean. So the first thing we have to define is the location of the image. So for that we're going to add two round brackets to create a tuple. And since I've made all of the images the same size, 
we don't need to position these at any specific locations so we're just going to say zero and zero and this is going to make sure that they are all aligned perfectly and then after that we're going to add another comma and then add the actual file path to the image that we want to display at this location so we're going to add two quotation marks like so so the first image is going to be the one that is going to be displayed at the very bottom of the stack of images so that in this case is going to be the back side of the hair so we're going to say character to refer to the character folder and then we're going to say hair long and then we're going to add two square brackets to create a placeholder and then we're going to say hair color to refer to the hair color variable that we created earlier that contains the right hair color for the character and then we're going to add a dash after that and then say back.png like so so here you can see that the image that is going to be picked is going to be dependent on the value that is inside of the hair color variable so then later on when the player chooses their custom hair color and this hair color variable is going to contain the value that they have chosen then this image is going to be picked according to that and now we're going to do the same thing with the other images so I'm going to duplicate this line like so and then I'm going to switch the image for the body instead so instead of saying hair long we're going to say body skin and then we're going to switch the hair color variable to say skin color like so and then we're going to move this back and the dash like so so now it says body skin and then skin color dot png and then let's do the next one but before that we're just going to make sure that we're adding a comma after this first file path right here so we're going to add a comma right there to make sure that we are doing this correctly and then we're going to add another comma after this string right here like so so now we can go ahead and duplicate this line as well so the next thing that comes after the body is going to be the eyes so for that I'm going to change the image to say eye color like so and then the variable is going to say eye color like so and then we're going to do the next one so I'm going to duplicate that and this is going to be the shirt so we're going to say shirt and then we name this to shirt like so and then the last one and this is going to be the front hair so we're going to say hair long and then hair color like so and then dash front like so and now since this is the last item inside of this composite we're just going to remove the last comma so now we have defined all of the images as well as the locations for these images that goes inside of this composite the next thing we're going to do is to create a new label where we're going to show this character to see what it looks like so for that we're going to create a few empty lines underneath this composite and then we're going to say label scene one for example and then we're going to add a background image so we're going to say scene background and background is the name of the background image that we want to show but because this background image is going to be twice as large as the actual project size we're going to resize this to be half of its original size so for that we're going to use a transform so we're going to say at half size and then we can go ahead and create this transform just above this label so we're going to say transform half size and then zoom 0.5 like so and then we'll go ahead and add the character displayable to this label so for that we're going to say show character and because the character displayable is also going to be twice as large as the project we're going to go ahead and scale this down and because we also want to position this character on the screen we're going to create a new transform so I'm going to duplicate this one that we have already created like so and then I'm going to rename this to character transform like so and then except for scaling it down to be half of its original size we are also going to align it so we're going to say align and this is going to be at 0.0, .0 and 0 
but you can of course position your character wherever you want. And now we just got to remember to apply this transform to the character displayable. So we're going to say at character transform, like so. Now to make sure that we can actually see something happen in our game after we have launched it, we're going to have to add some sort of a pause into this label. Otherwise the game is just going to run through so fast, we're not going to see anything happen. So for that I'm going to add a piece of dialogue by adding two quotation marks and then I'm going to say this is a custom character, like so. Now we're also going to need to do a quick correction to the script and that is in this line right here where we're saying shirt color is equal to shirts colors. This should of course say shirt colors instead as that is what we have called this variable right here. So now we're just going to make sure that we are jumping to the scene one label from our start label. So we're going to create a new line underneath here and then say jump scene one like so. So now let's go ahead and save our changes and then launch the game to see what this looks like. So here inside of the main menu of our game, let's go ahead and press the start button and see what happens. So here we can see that we have the character to the left right here, as well as a background image right here, and the dialogue right here. So we know that that is working correctly. So in the next part of this tutorial, we're going to go ahead and make sure that the character can be customized by switching the hair color, eye color, skin color, and shirt color. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.